Hello beautiful beings, it's Andrea Fawkes here in Cheshire, <laughs> still in Cheshire um, and I just wanted to talk about a client session I had the other day um, and also the area I'm in and about history and her story and um, I had a client the other day, a lot of my clients sometimes are therapists, healers themselves and this particular client was a Native American shaman, a gentleman. And um, I could feel the heaviness of what he needed to process in his own life. And I was like, whoa, I really hope, he, even though he's written a lovely email reaching out for help, I really hope that he's ready to process this because I could feel the weight and the gravitas of of what he needed to heal you know and and he works with his community as a shaman helping you know Native American people and so I thought wow I really hope that he's open to what I'm gonna say because I could feel it you know and um, this is often how it flows with sessions so I was I like to work in the now if you book a session you know, I want to work with you today, tomorrow, the next day, as soon as possible. I That's how I roll. I don't take bookings months in advance. Never work like that. Doesn't work except maybe one-to-one -one sessions in person. People have to travel a long way. You have to, you know, make allowances for those logistics. So anyway, going back to the story of my beautiful client, so I could feel the heaviness, I could feel the pain in his 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 email, his pain in his voice when we finally spoke. And it was very difficult to anchor this session down because from the minute you make an appointment, energetically that work starts. So of course he has to cancel the session because he's too sick the next day because the purging is already starting. So I said, well, you know, if you want to wait another day, whatever, you know, do that. And he's like, no, no, I feel up to it the next day. So it's good because sometimes the sabotage or the energies that are trying to hold you in that old paradigm reality will like, yeah, let's put it off for a week, two weeks. It's like, no, let's crack on while this stuff is coming up. Um, He was dealing with some very, very you know, dark ancestral stuff, but also some heavy past life stuff. And also the perception that in this lifetime, he's a Native American Indian descent. Um, but actually in his past life, he'd been a cowboy doing not so great things to the Native American Indians. And there was a lot of abuse there that had happened. And also some sexual issues that were coming up and it's great so we can help people to heal all this, you know, so they can go back cleansed of all this trauma, cleansed of the ancestral trauma without carrying this weight, you know, with you and and the trauma that how it's rolled out in your life, affecting your personal relationships and things. So not only can you, you know, take that knowledge and wisdom um, instead of fighting for the rights outwardly of Indigenous people, which of course we want to, you know, we have to look at who we've been on a soul level. We might not have always been, you know, these Indigenous people. We may have been the opposition in other timelines and we have to resolve that from the other timelines so we can honour the incarnation we've chosen in this timeline to represent whatever peoples of the world we're here to represent, but also to encourage those people to, you know, this healing is about going within and looking at your emotional Akashic records. You know, that's that's what I deal with a lot. And even here where I'm going to spin it round and show you where I'm at. I'm in Nantwich at a lovely lake here. And uh, I, I don't come here very often even though I was brought up in this area. And it's a beautiful lake and there's some beautiful houses behind, but I just went and read the notice board. And again, you find out fascinating information. I knew that Nantwich was a brine salt spa 
spa town at some point, but I didn't know that it had healing. It has a swimming pool outside, but I think you can still go in because they did do up the leisure centre. I'm hoping that the outdoor brine swimming pool is still there without too many chemicals put in it. But in the ancient times, there was a big hotel apparently behind where I am and people would come here to take the brine waters and, you know, heal from whatever their issues were with the healing brine water where this let me show you the lake where the lake is again you know but obviously all that got stopped Nantwich never achieved its spa town status like Harrogate and Bath and and the other ones um and and it just kind of I don't know there was a civil war here which I think's mad because Every year, they love to reenact the Civil War. They all get dressed up with their little guns and cannons and they reenact the Civil War, bringing that energy of conflict and battle back into the energy lines. Oh, good one. Fantastic. And they think this is a great tourist attraction that brings visitors in by reenacting conflict and drama in the town. It's got some beautiful old Tudor black and white buildings here, but there was a lot of war here. The land is heavy with the war. You can still feel it, you know. I feel the oppression of the people. The people are, you know, very different than the southern people, and yet this is, you know, the area that I'm from. But I, I can see how they comply. It's very cookie cutter 3D here. Um, But I'm going to drive over to another beautiful area that seems very lighter, an area called Malpas, where there's a castle there called Chumley Castle that I've been to. So I'm just sharing all this information because this is stored in your DNA, stored in your ancestral lineage. You know, as many of you know, I'm dealing with my dad at the moment, who isn't the easiest of characters and is certainly not going to help me. You know, he sees me as a dictator. Well, they're all benevolent dictators. Um, You know, I'm a dictator because you know, he's stuck in the hospital now because he's not eating and the hospital food isn't particularly very good. So I'm taking food every day and encouraging him to eat it. But he sees that as a form of dictatorship making him eat. But they've got him on those horrible little drinks for malnutrition because, you know, he's he and my mum in my childhood were always the food police. And, uh, you know, I look back now understanding that, you know, their beliefs around food were very unhinged. Um, yes, perhaps it's allowed them to live to uh, an older age, but they had a lot of issues, which I think were perhaps linked to malnutrition. You know, certainly lack of B12, you know, some thyroid issues are, you know, malnutrition, not uh, emotional issues. Um and yes, today's society eat way more than they need to eat. And my dad's generation had good gut bacteria in their childhood and they ate, you know, the right things. But they had emotional trauma. You know, my dad's 96. He had bombs at the end of his road as a child. You know, they blew up you know, parts of his road as a child. And um, he did say that some children from the school died, but he's only talked about this of recent times. You know, he served in in um, Greece in the Lovett Scouts in 1946, 47. He never speaks about this. I've only seen some photographs in recent times. So, you know, when you come from an ancestral lineage and, you know, my dad's generation for a lot of you would be your grandparents or even your great grandparents. Um, and they haven't healed their emotional trauma. You know, I've done the healing work on myself to hold the space. You know, even one of the, the nurses in the hospital yesterday, I have some lovely chats with some of them. Um, and they're like, where do you get your energy from? And I'm like, I'm actually really low on energy right now. I'm exhausted, but I don't come across like that to people because I'm able to bring life force energy into myself to keep going. And that's what we all have to do. We have to keep this life force energy coming into ourselves. Um, let me just see if anyone's put any interesting comments. Um, so yeah, you know, and also I don't want to say too much because um, if I talk too much about what's going on in Maui, that'll probably get my video censored. But I have spoken um, 
in little comments and posted videos of people who are there explaining what's happening. And the great thing is, even though it's an awful, horrible, horrible, terrible thing that has happened there, what filled my heart with some potential joy, I know that sounds an awful word to say, was that there were some younger generations, look like 20 year olds, 30 year olds, they know what's going on and they're telling the truth, you know? And they perhaps haven't made, you know, outspoken videos before on social media, so they're not getting censored straight away because they haven't caught up with them. So it's great that they're out there sharing the truth and it's, it's getting out there, they're going, you know, those videos are, are going around. So the truth is getting out of what's really going on. Um, because as we know in this world, nothing is quite what it seems. But the more we do the inner work, the more we're going to be able to heal that emotional trauma and be able to help our communities more, be able to help <clears throat> the emotional work in those in those places with those people like I talked at the beginning of my video about the shamanic Native American you know with this work he's doing on himself he understands it's deep it's very heavy stuff you know I don't want to talk too much about his his case um because there are so many Native American shamans there but so many many indigenous shamans of many many places in the world still carrying heavy ancestral trauma and it takes a lot for the patriarchy to reach out for help it takes a lot for people who are working as healers to especially men to acknowledge that they need help and to reach out to a woman to help them with that you know an intuitive star lineage woman you know that's where my wisdom and knowledge comes from <clears throat> it's coming from a much higher uh, source of place of being you know that's my lineage that's who I am on a soul level um it's not from earthly incarnations you know I've had to clear a lot of trauma there um as do many of you have to clear that that trauma to hold the light to be here to do the work we're doing I'm just looking at the comments in case there's anything I need to mention just now so um you know the other thing is sat at the lake here here's another thing like I know that it's not good for the birds to feed them bread. People think it's that they're they're so kind and, you know, they saw their ancestors feeding the birds bread. But, you know, unless it was organic and sourdough, I doubt it's going to help those birds at all. And even then, I don't know if it's good for birds. You know, a lot of the signs, can't see any here, but there's another lake I go to where it says, please don't feed the birds. The birds cannot digest, you know, white, cheap, processed bread. And yet, people love to feed them and I'm sure even if I spoke kindly in a nice soft tone and said you might not know this all the couple are coming back that fed them the bread um and they took two loaves and um I'm like oh they're quite sweet people they might actually if if you told them they might consider it but usually you just get a mouthful of abuse about people because people don't like to be told the truth people like the psychology of humanity is that humanity like to think they figured something out themselves so I'd do more good sticking a sign in front of my car saying please don't feed the birds you know and explaining why and having nothing to do with it or making some leaflets and flittering them around you know they don't want to hear it from a human that's you know the defensiveness not many people can hear the truth you know human human trauma because they're still locked most people are still locked in their trauma so they go into the childhood defense mode of the childhood so you can't tell people anything they have to figure it it's them, themselves you know it's like with my dad he's still locked in whatever trauma he has and you know having known me for 53 years hasn't hasn't planted many seeds of awakening you know he does love magnesium um, he does think that helps him poople do pull go to the loo. And, um, you know, he is aware that castor oil is good. And yet knowing all that information, he didn't tell me his situation in the hospital. And he's just had to have a very unfortunate situation happen in the hospital to make him go to the loo. Had he told me this, I would have brought the right things. And he's not drinking water. If you're not drinking enough water and if you're not walking in a hospital, you're not massaging your bowels to go to the toilet, you're going to get constipated. And castor oil is very good for going to the loo. But 
you know, the sort of more barbaric 3D approach is what he had to have. And it was very um, undignified for him. And they should have let him go and sit on a loo, but they made him stay in the, stay in the you know, bed, which was not a great move. But, you know, if you don't ask for help from the right sources who love and, and want the best for you, you're going to be left to the devices of the 3D reality. And, you know, that is not always going to go well. And sometimes people have to learn from that experience. You know, people only learn by their own experiences. So, you know, we look around us and we see all these things going on with humanity. But humanity have to want to heal and evolve. They have to want to do this deep emotional inner work on themselves, you know, and you have to have the space in your life to process those emotions and the purging of the emotions that comes up with that. And it might be that you feel like you're being sick or you're going to the loo a lot. That's a purging, you know, and when we process our emotions, that's what happens. We need to change our toxic diets. Not many people are open to doing this work and changing those those things and I don't think it's any more expensive really to buy organic vegetables in the long run or if you have the time or the space which my life isn't like that right now I have grown organic vegetables in the past um, and that's great if you're in one space all the time and you're there to harvest them there to look after them but when you're living what I'm living right now I don't really have the time to grow vegetables I'm looking after the vegetables in my dad's garden and trying to take those to him in the hospital for him to eat freshly picked you know vegetables from his own garden. So I know I've caught some of you off guard and I know that we've been chatting quite a long time and uh, uh, just looking at some of the comments. Yeah, so a lot's going on in the world right now, Ooh, including me dropping my phone. <laughs> so you have to have the cosmic giggle with everything in life. It's just how it is. So I've sat here, I've been able to log on to a remote Wi-Fi. I've managed to get some codes that I needed to sort my website out. Um, so if you do want a session with me, I am doing the Skype sessions. I am in Cheshire at the moment. So I know some people have paid a deposit, maybe three people, I think, still that I was not able to fulfill a session in person for you because I'm up north in Cheshire and I'm not in Glastonbury but I will be in Glastonbury in divine timing and uh, I am in Cheshire right now but I can do my Skype emotional Akashic records from anywhere and on average I offer two sessions a day um, so I don't get booked in advance that's not how I flow I've said that I like to work in the now so it tends to flow like that and it's worked perfectly like that in the flow so many blessings you know, mahalo is Hawaiian for thank you. I don't think the aloha spirit will ever be diminished from the people of the lands of Hawaiian islands. Um, you know, sending them many blessings. My heart really belongs in, in Hawaii. And there was a beautiful place um, called Lumeria that was established in the early 1900s a retreat center in Maui actually I really hope that's still there it's a beautiful place and there's so many beautiful places I mean I've spent some time in Maui but I uh, have spent many many months many actually adding all the months up together has got to years in the big island in Hawaii so that is I feel where my heart belongs and many of you have probably got that heart postcard um, have I got one with me? I don't know. I, I went to Mauna Kea, the highest point in the Big Island years ago. And I took, the. I think actually it was 2008 in this lifetime. I took this beautiful green flash and a heart appeared within the green flash. And I have taken it in other parts of the world. But the best one I ever took was in Mauna Kea at the highest point at the snow goddess Poliahu um, there in Mauna Kea um, on the Big Island. Uh, so I did give out, I think about 10,000 of those postcards so some people still have them over the years um, so much love and many blessings for today and my website's below if you want to book a Skype session much love or I have guided meditations free ones as well so have a look on my website much love
Bye for now. Many blessings from Nantwich, which could be a salt brine spa town of healing, maybe even in the future.